Radio Pulpit, 657 AM. Hello, my name is Janine van Lieke from Radio Pulpit. Such a pleasure to be with you. This is number two of Pleased to Meet You, Lord. The whole series we're doing about who God is. He's not just this benevolent presence. He's a person that you relate to. Last week, we did the joy of the Lord. Today, we're in his humility. I am fascinated with the humility of the Lord. Just because the world thinks humility is weakness. But godly humility, his kind of humility, is God knowing who he is. He's got nothing to prove. And then deciding to be lost. Seriously, a God who's got nothing to prove and therefore he is free to love and to serve everyone and everything. That's the kind of God that we serve. Now, this is something that is not celebrated by the world. So I thought it's something that we don't talk about enough in Christianity. This humility of our Lord, I'm going to give you Old and New Testament reference. Isaiah 42, 1 to 3 says, here is my servant whom I uphold, talking about Jesus, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. I always see Satan as Las Vegas yelling and blaring marketing in your face saying i'm so big and i'm so strong worship me and god is just the biggest and the strongest and you've actually got to go look for him because he is humility here the new testament mark eleven twenty nine: take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls there is rest in a God who doesn't have to prove anything. The day you can relax because may, God made you this way, and that's fine. He uses you just like you are. Um, remember Moses in Numbers. It says that Moses was the most humble person ever. Guess why he got on so well with the Lord? They've got it in common. Humility is like a linking place. You want to be where God is? Go to the least of these. Go to the lowest. That's where a humble God serves first, where you'll relate, where you see his heart. Is that humility? Um, because think about it. If he was not humble, Jesus would not have been able to die on the cross. He died as a criminal. If he had anything to prove, um, and he had to go die for people like us. Any pride, any arrogance in him, like all other go gods you've ever learned about, he would have be stood there in front of the cross and said, excuse me, do you know who I am? <laughs> but he had nothing to prove. This is what needed to be done. I'm the one that needs to do it because I'm pure and holy and perfect. Let's go do this for my bride. Isn't that amazing? If he wasn't humble... We couldn't have gone to him with our weaknesses. I want to read you Isaiah 57, 15, which says, For this is what the high and exalted one says, that is the God that we serve. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in high and holy places, but I also live with the ones who are contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the hearts of the contrite. I've experienced it firsthand where it's your own fault, where you make the mistakes, where you disqualify it because of whatever choices you make and whatever the results of those choices are. And then you can go to God because you know, as a humble God, he wants you to come closer. That's why he died on the cross. If you ever have the perception, just think of any normal relationship someone else and you go to him and you know for a fact they actually look down on you a bit they actually think they're a little bit better than you are you know they're judging you you'll maybe go tell them what they want to hear but you'll never never be yourself you'll never let yourself be weak before them so knowing that you serve a humble god is an open door where you can say god i'm so sorry Number one, you can confess your sins to a humble God where you know he wants to redeem you. He wants to fix this. Um, and, and you can actually ask a humble God, God, 
Can you protect me from myself? You can be weak in front of a humble God. <sighs> He's a good God. He can love you unconditionally now. Knowing everything. We spoke about John 2.24. He knows what's in you. He knows the brokenness in you. But he created the whole world. He created free will. He created time, a universe, everything for a relationship with you. If he was an arrogant God, he would have related to you as he'd have a relationship only with those who deserved it. And none of us do. You see what a difference it makes that we serve a humble God. Um, because he's humble, he can serve everyone. I want to take you to Mark 9. I love the scripture, Mark 9, 35. So Jesus comes, puts on uh, what I call foorskut, <laughs> and he goes and sits and he washes their stinky feet. And then he gets up and he says, do what I do. But here he says, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be the first must be the very last a servant of them all. He just shown that to them. Because the moment you can be lost, the moment you make it out for yourself that my God, Jesus Christ, the king of the universe who said, ah, and a universe created, that God puts himself in a place where he was seen as a criminal and he was spat on. That God is willing to serve me. Jesus right now is sitting on the throne right next to his father. Guess what he's spending his time on? He's praying for you. You who don't deserve it and you know it because he is this humble God. If he can do it, that means I'm free to do the same. Is If his humility leads to him serving anyone and everyone and that you don't have to deserve it, then when I start doing life emulating him and I know that I can be lost, those who want to be first must be least of all, servant of all, then I can start serving the guy on the street corner. Uh, the person who stole money. That's when Matthew 25 suddenly becomes possible. When Jesus literally says those who, who he accepts into heaven are the ones that go serve the people in jail, in, in hospitals, those who don't have food, those who don't have clothes, the least of these. Those are the people he wants us to go to. We can't do it if we don't get this thing with it. We serve a humble God. I like this thing that our God doesn't promote himself. His humility is this invitation, you know, when he creates a universe of stars, literally. And he says, you can look up and not see him. You can, I remember that movie. Jodie Foster was in that movie. Remember where she said, how can you create a whole, how can there be a whole universe and it can be only us in this whole universe? Well, guess what? Our God literally creates a universe to show us who he is, who he is, <laughs> just for you, a whole universe to demonstrate who he is, and we can miss it because he's such a humble God. A God has got a problem with pride. Seriously, he literally says, if you're prideful, if you're arrogant, it's going to come to a fall. It's something that's important to him. So let's celebrate the humility of our God. Let's be free to love everyone just like he is, to serve everyone, to realize as he is right there sitting next to his father serving us, we're on earth literally to do the same. Our humility opens the door to his presence just like Moses. We can be a favorite of his if we can get this humility thing. And I want to read you this last one. Proverbs 22 verse 4 says, humility is the fear of the Lord. They go together. Its wages are riches, honor, and life. Where normally riches and honor would bring you low, it'll be, it goes with the arrogance and all of that, riches and honor. If you get the humility and the fear of the Lord bit, then he says he adds to it life. And his life is life in abundance. It's a secret of the universe. It's a secret of the heart of this Lord that we serve. So I pray, Lord, show us the beauty of your humility. Show us the strength of your humility. Um, help us to be able to worship you for the humble God you are and to emulate you well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Download the Radio Pulpit app on your phone and be in contact with your daily companion 24 hours a day.